Hey guys, welcome back to the Kemp training series. If you've been following along, you know that we've been talking about the selection tools. And the tool that we left off on was the select by color tool. So the first thing I want you to do before we actually talk about the tool is I want you to open up this document that I've shared with you. And I have the link below so you can get this document if you still need it. And the name of the image is called select by color. So if you just go to file, open, and then navigate to where you have the file stored, we can go ahead and get started. So if you look at the tool options for the select by color tool, you'll notice that this looks strikingly similar to the fuzzy select tool. In fact, the options are identical. The biggest difference between these two tools is that the fuzzy select tool, when you click anywhere on your image, will select adjacent pixels, whereas the select by color tool will pick up pixels of a similar color, depending on this threshold, from all over your image. So I'm just going to show you a quick example of what I mean. So I'm just going to go to select none to get rid of that selection that I had right here. And if I take the eyedropper tool or color picker and I choose this color, then I'm just going to go ahead and use this paintbrush and I'm going to paint this color right here. So these are obviously not adjacent. They're nowhere near each other. Let's go back to the select by color. And when I click it, you'll notice it not only selects where I clicked in this adjacent area, but it also selects the color out here. So when I press delete or on Mac, if you don't have your delete key map, then you can go to edit clear. You'll see that it deletes not only this area, but this one too. So I'm going to hold Control and press Z to undo that. I'm going to press it twice. So this is a very effective way to select a similar pixel color from around your image. And there could be a variety of reasons of why you'd want to do that. And so you can see it works very similar to the fuzzy select tool unless you have pixels of the same color on other parts of your screen. So let's hold control Z and just undo all of that. And now to give you a good demonstration on where you would use this in your picture, let's go ahead and open another file that I've shared with you. If you go to file, open, it's the one called curtain, press open. The way that this image is taken, there's a blue background or I don't know if it's a wall or a sheet or something behind this curtain but you know we can obviously see through the curtain to this blue background well we're going to use this in one of our images but we want to be able to look through this curtain because you can tell it's lace and that you should be able to see through it but as it sits right now we're just seeing the sheet behind it so we need this to have a transparent background if you're familiar with what we've done in other videos, let's go to Layer, Transparency, Add to Alpha Channel, and now we're ready to use the Select by Color tool. So with the Select by Color tool chosen, and the threshold, let's put that at 30, and then if I click this blue area down here, let me just zoom in so you can see a little better. With a threshold of 30, it searched the entire image for similar pixels within this threshold of 30, and it picked up a few other ones, but that's not really useful to us right now. We need a little bit higher threshold, so it picks up some of these blues between the white, so that it really makes it look like we can see through the curtain. Let's turn this up to about 70. We'll click down here in the dark blue again. And now you'll see we've selected many, many more areas all over this curtain. Another way we can adjust the threshold on the fly is just like with the fuzzy selection tool, we can click an area and we can actually drag the mouse while holding the mouse button. And as I drag right, you see I include more areas. As I drag left, I include less. And you'll see that threshold change as I do that. 
So let's find a good happy medium. I say a threshold of about 80 is what we're looking for. With the threshold of 80 chosen, selecting on the blue, let's go to Edit, Clear. Or if you want to use your keyboard, you can press Delete. And because we have transparency selected, we're not erasing to a white background, which is what it would do without transparency. We're erasing to this alpha channel, which is actually see, letting us see right through our image. I'm just going to go to select none so you can see the results. And as you can see, in the areas where there's still curtain left, we can still kind of see through the curtain as if this were a real curtain we were looking through. So select by color is a very effective way to add opacity to certain parts in your image without having to change the entire image's opacity, such as with this slider. That's not exactly what we want because then we will lose these sharp whites that really stand out. We don't want that for our image. We want these whites to really stand out, but yet we still want to have the ability to look through the curtain. And that's exactly what we've done here. So now all that's left to do is to touch up this image a little bit more. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the Rectangle Select tool. You can see right here where we have this Windows sill that we don't want to be part of our curtain. So what we can do is we can simply delete it like that. And now you'll see that we actually cut off part of our curtain ends right here. And that's OK, because what we're going to do is we're actually just going to use this inner part. So from probably right about here to right about here, where we have the full ends. And we're going to use that later on in, in our project. So don't worry about that for now. When you're done with this image, so we can use it somewhere else, I want you guys to go to File, Export As, and I want you to change this curtain.jpg or jpg to curtain.png, and leave it in your GIMP files folder or wherever you chose to save this. When you hit export, you have this PNG menu come up. This all looks good, except for just make sure that save background color is checked. And this is your transparency. If you don't change the file type to PNG and you leave it JPEG, all this transparency will turn solid white. So if your settings match mine, go ahead and hit export. And now we have a usable copy of this curtain that we're going to use later in our project. Anyway, guys, I hope this helped, and if you have any questions, let me know below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.